Arachnophobia. Arachnophobia is the fear of spiders, as well as other arachnids like scorpions or ticks. Anyone who suffers with this condition will scream, cry, or have some sort of intense emotional outburst at the mere sight of a spider, or even pictures of spiders. Many people question whether this fear comes from your genetics, or rather the culture you were raised in. In places like Europe, arachnophobia is very common, yet in Papua New Guinea and Cambodia for instance, spiders are an included ingredient in many traditional traditional meals. One historical legend of arachnophobia involves St. Patrick of Ireland, who was known to have a fear of spiders. One night, he was encountered by a giant spider that terrified him. He instantly prayed to God for help, and the spider was killed. This event, along with other dreams and encounters he had with God, convinced him to leave Ireland and return to Britain for the time being. Today, it is estimated that around 4% of the global population is afraid of spiders. Ophidiophobia Ophidiophobia is the fear of snakes, and it's a relatively natural fear that almost a third of adult humans suffer from. It's important to remember that not every phobia is inherently irrational or stupid. Even most mammals have a built-in negative reaction to snakes, because it's vital for their survival that they are aware and constantly on guard against them. After all, snakes avoid eating plants of any kind. Instead, they eat almost anything that walks and they are willing to stalk their prey for hours before striking. Cynophobia. While the fear of spiders and snakes are the most common animal-related phobias, the large number of people with cynophobia, which is the fear of dogs, is a worrying statistic given how many dogs there are in the world. For example, in India, there are 25 million stray dogs, and in America, there are 62 million pet dogs. Dog owners are usually completely ignorant to the existence of this fear, making matters even worse. Aquaphobia Aquaphobia is the intense fear of water, even when it poses little to no actual danger. Psychologists suggest that people develop aquaphobia through a combination of bad experiences with or around water, as well as genetic factors. 2.3% of adults across the world have aquaphobia, and in America, 46% of American adults are afraid of deep water in pools, and 64% of Americans are afraid of deep bodies of water in general. The fear of deep bodies of water is actually a separate fear called thalassophobia, which can include the fear of swimming in these bodies of water, or even just the fear of struggling to comprehend the vastness of the sea or the aquatic animals that inhabit it. Ablutophobia. Ablutophobia is the fear of bathing, washing, and cleaning yourself, and it's a fear commonly experienced by children and women. It is known as a specific phobia, which is a type of phobia where the person who suffers from it knows that their fear is irrational, yet they are still unable to address it or avoid the thing that triggers the negative emotion from them. People with the fear of bathing may feel disconnected from reality or detached from their own body. They may be afraid of having a nervous breakdown, passing out, fainting, or even dying. Little is known about what causes this fear, as well as many other types of irrational fears. Most speculate that they come from trauma and can be conquered with the help of a therapist. Acrophobia. Acrophobia is the irrational fear of heights. Most people are naturally fearful of being exposed to extreme heights. However, acrophobia usually takes place when someone is not high up or in a dangerous situation, but they feel like they are. It belongs to a specific category of phobias called space and motion disconcert. On the other hand, there are some people who have no fear of exposure to heights. These people are said to have a head for heights, and many of them enjoy hobbies such as hiking and mountain climbing, and they are extremely well suited for certain jobs, such as steeplejacks or wind turbine mechanics. With that being said, about 2-5% to of the world suffers from acrophobia, and women are two times more likely to experience this fear than men. Aerophobia Aerophobia is the fear of flying on an airplane or in a helicopter. It's also known as flying anxiety or flight phobia. People with this fear will avoid flying whenever possible, no matter how inconvenient it can become for their lives. The most anxiety-provoking aspects of flying for anyone who suffers from aerophobia can be the plane's takeoff, bad weather, and turbulence. 60% of people with the fear of flying also mention having an additional unrelated type of anxiety disorder. Luckily, aerophobia Phobia can also be treated with medication as well as good old-fashioned exposure therapy. 
Astrophobia. Astrophobia is the fear of thunder and lightning. It is a treatable phobia that both humans and animals often develop and overcome with time. People with this fear understand their feelings are usually irrational and that the threat against their safety is minimal. Most of the reactions people have with this phobia range from typical feelings like trembling or sweating and panic. However, there are some unique reactions that people with this phobia sometimes suffer from, such as the intense need for companionship and reassurance from other people that they will be safe. Often people with astrophobia are addicted to checking their local weather forecasts, and sometimes even avoid going outside entirely until they know for sure there is absolutely no chance of a storm developing near them. Hylophobia Hylophobia is the fear of trees and forests. This fear is genetic and usually originates from negative experiences people have with getting lost in the woods, or being overwhelmed by the vastness of a particular forest that they are walking through. It's also not uncommon for people who struggle in general with understanding their own life experiences to develop this fear of forests and trees, although not much is known about why this correlation exists. Claustrophobia Claustrophobia is a fear of confined and small spaces, like elevators or crowded and windowless rooms, or even hotel rooms and small cars. It's typically classified as an anxiety disorder, and it often leads to panic attacks. Studies estimate that 5-10% to of the world's population is affected by severe claustrophobia, and only a small amount of people end up receiving treatment for this disorder. Claustrophobia is typically thought to have one key symptom, the fear of suffocation. People with this fear aren't just bothered by the small space that they are occupying, but also what would happen within that small space. It is very similar to the next fear we will discuss, agoraphobia. Agoraphobia is the fear of not being able to escape the dangerous environment one may currently think they are in, even when this environment is totally safe. Agoraphobia can take place within public transit, shopping malls, crowds, or even in the workplace and at school. People with this fear will go to great lengths to isolate themselves from any environment they feel unsafe in. And in the most extreme cases, they are entirely unable to leave their home or even their bed. Social Anxiety Disorder Social anxiety disorder, also known as social phobia, leaves people unable to comfortably navigate and exist in social settings. This can be because someone is afraid of the scrutiny they might receive from their peers and people around them, fearing negative judgment from others and allowing that possibility of not being liked to dominate their state of mind. Many people with a social anxiety disorder turn to alcohol and various drugs to reduce the feeling of fear. But these methods to cope don't stop or treat social anxiety disorder at all. Rather, they mask it while also introducing many other additional major problems. Therapy is strongly recommended for anyone dealing with these fears, especially cognitive behavior therapy. Glossophobia Glossophobia is the fear of public speaking, causing people to stammer in their speech and having a difficult time maintaining a consistent train of thought. Instead, allowing the fear of looking like a fool prevent them from being able to present their ideas coherently and smoothly. Preparation and rehearsing can help avoid these fears from taking over, as well as engaging in positive self-talk, practicing mindfulness and breathing exercises, and visualizing optimal performance. Autophobia. Autophobia is the fear of loneliness, and this fear is frequently talked about among young people today. People with this condition can suffer no matter what situation they are in, whether they are in company of others or in solitude. In isolation, people with autophobia struggle with the fear or inability to handle the challenges of life by themselves. Meanwhile, those who are around other people struggle with the idea that they aren't genuinely loved, accepted, or understood by them. Hodophobia. Hodophobia is the irrational fear of travel. It's not to be confused with an aversion that some may have with traveling, which is simply a normal preference that some people have. But rather, it is the intense anxiety or extreme series of panic attacks that someone can suffer while being away from home, or even just at the thought of traveling away from home. Trypanophobia. Trypanophobia, or the fear of needles, is the extreme fear of medical procedures involving injections or hypodermic needles. Sometimes, this is a reason why certain people refuse to get vaccinated for certain illnesses, or undergo necessary medical procedures. It's loosely related to another phobia, eichmophobia, which is the fear of sharply pointed objects. 10% of Americans are known to suffer from the fear of needles, with some polls estimating that the real number is actually much larger. Currently, 
The prevalence of this fear is increasing rapidly among children. In 1995, 25% of children suffered from trypanophobia, while in 2012, this number skyrocketed to 65%. Hemophobia Hemophobia is the fear of blood. Severe cases of this phobia can cause people to faint at the sight of blood, which is unusual in most other fears. Typically, Hemophobia comes from direct trauma that victims suffer during childhood, and 4% of people in the United States suffer from it. Interestingly enough, many historical figures are documented to have strong aversions to blood, such as Queen Victoria of England, who fainted multiple times during many of her medical procedures as soon as blood was visible, or even Emperor Dominician of ancient Rome, who avoided attending popular gladiator games and public executions specifically due to his aversion to seeing bloodshed. Iatrophobia. Iatrophobia is the fear of doctors. It is not uncommon at all for children to have this fear and attempt to avoid visiting the doctor by lying about how they feel to their parents. However, extreme versions of this fear exist, such as when some adults have intense negative reactions at the thought of visiting a doctor, even when they have life-threatening and painful illnesses that require immediate care. This can take place due to the fear of being diagnosed with something terrible and not wanting to receive the bad news. Or, it can also be because of someone's stubborn denial to accept the fact that they have a particular illness, because deep down, they are coping with the frightening scenario that they are in. Steve Jobs, one of the founders of Apple Computer, died from pancreatic cancer because he refused to get himself proper medical treatment, instead believing in the personal control of his own body and utilizing alternative medicines, therapies, and diets. However, shortly before he died, he expressed regret to his biographer for not undergoing surgery sooner, realizing that it probably would have saved his life. Dentophobia Similar to the last fear we discussed, dentophobia is the fear of dentists. As you could probably guess by the name, causes of dentophobia can range from poor experiences people have had with horrible dentists, someone knowing someone else who has this fear and hearing other people describe their own negative experiences with their dentists, someone's fearful imagination of the worst case scenario you can undergo when going to the dentist, or even parental modeling. An idea that suggests that your parents can accidentally instill various fears like dentophobia into your mind, usually while you are a young, impressionable child, by assuming you have that fear naturally when you actually don't. Germophobia Germophobia is extremely common, and typically this fear increases in intensity the older you get. It is the inherent fear of germs and getting sick. After the pandemic, one study found that an astonishing 42% of Americans claim to be germophobes. On the surface, this fear doesn't seem too bad, as everyone should be aware of germ-filled environments and how to avoid getting exposed to them as much as possible. One common symptom of this fear is when people obsessively wash their hands, which again, doesn't sound like that bad of an idea. However, germophobia can quickly spiral into the realm of irrationality, causing people to avoid leaving their houses due to their internal fear of getting sick. On top of that, germ exposure is not inherently negative, as it can boost your immune system and prevent you from commonly getting sick and suffering from frequent allergies. 